Hello everyone, welcome back to this game which I have been playing incessantly until everybody is uh, sick of me talking about other games because I'm running out of Hexen content. I don't know where we're going, I've found a bishop and a afrit, which is not my favourite pair of things in the world, but I guess it is what it is. We need to find the rest of these. I wonder. I seem to remember that there's another thing down here that opens up. To mirror that cellar over there, but maybe that doesn't open up until after this is all opened up and let us through. Uh, which I believe is the end of the level in that respect, so we need to run around a lot. Figure out where to go next. I'm fairly sure that this sort of corridor of sorts has something to do with it. I'm seeing switches that I'm sure I've pulled. There's the one that I can't where this is. It just literally does nothing. Open sesame. That takes us to the thing. That has a temporary effect. I can hit step. Oh, interesting. I do like it when they do this. Because it feels like they've got a lot of Z-axis work going on, but they really haven't. Do you see what I mean? Like, it's still two-dimensional. It all fits inside itself. Like, in between, in from top down. There's no special behaviour. It's not like Duke Nukem, where they had certain types of sector that could overlap other types of sector, or a water sector that had very special behaviour indeed. It just feels like that was underneath there. And now all of a sudden this is open. So I was kind of right. And then that side opens. Ah, I was right. See, told you. We hadn't pulled that switch apparently. I'd made an assumption. And therefore I had made an ass out of you and me. Which I'm fine with. Because if anything makes an ass out of you, I'm happy to go down with you. People used to say that. And I was like, first of all, don't be trite. That's nonsense. Second of all. I'm okay with that. So, you know, stop trying to make me feel bad about something I'm okay with. There it is. I told you, did I not? Now I remember it. I remember that there is indeed a sapphire or something similar in a gooey section with a waterfall. So let's go. We figured it out without boring people too much. Very happy with that. Call that a success. So we're going to uh, save mana here, I think. If we can possibly help it. I know there's some there, but. You know, we're probably going to need it against... Oh, God. Against, uh... Enemies that actually hurt. Oh, there's going to be baddies in there, no doubt. <laughs> he says. That, um, that looking around was me literally jumping. Ah, I say literally jumping. Literally, figuratively jumping. I have trouble with the word literally. And it's not because of the fact that it has been bastardised into the Oxford English Dictionary to mean figuratively. No, sir. In fact, the problem I have with literally is that you can literally do something figurative, right? If I... I just said just now I literally jumped. I did not literally jump. But I wanted you to know that I was not exaggerating that it made me jump. So, to the extent that one jumps, as in one is startled, I literally was startled. However, and, and to the extent that my hand had a spasm that caused me to oh, I'm scared, um, move my mouse in a funny way and therefore look around in a weird way and everything was strange. Well, I did not literally jump. I'm sitting down. It would be difficult to literally jump in this situation. Furthermore, I didn't actually my, my legs didn't move. So even if I could have jumped, I wouldn't have jumped. I, I just was startled, and I had the spasm of being startled. Well, that was a bit rude, actually. The old china plate. So the problem I have with the word literally is that it's a very binary situation, and often I want somewhere in between the, the sentiment of not exaggerating you, and yet, excuse me, oh, fighter of mushroom. I need to stop being hit by that, because that's hurting. 
that amulet is something I want. I think we might not be able to get it until we can fly. Oh no, there's something behind there, so we can probably get through. So when I say literally and it's still figurative, rest assured I know what literally actually means, irrespective of what the dictionary may have you know, conceded to a bunch of people who have no fucking idea how to use the language. All I'm trying to do is reduce any impact of... Uh, any any impact against the, 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 the surety of what I'm saying, the sincerity of it. Maybe I should say sincerely. Excuse me. The Afrit caused the centaur to put its shield up, which caused me not to be able to shoot the centaur to the extent that I would have appreciated. Now, around here somewhere is a jump that you don't think you can make, but you can. Also around here somewhere is an Afrit. Fuck off! Excuse me. Wonder if your uh, Z axis here, when you do this jump, doesn't actually translate the position that it thinks your, you know, your shot is. Because it didn't seem like when I punched upwards to hit that Afrit that I actually hit that Afrit, even though I was in mid-air at the time. Not that I can fault such an uh, old engine for having a, an oversight like that, or at least a difficulty implementing something like that, I don't know. Probably I don't want to be dying like I am. Didn't make mm, HP out of that, so I'm happy to have done it. Probably this is a Wraith Verge situation, um, so let's just do that. There you go. These mushrooms explode into poison clouds, which I tried to do, but it hit the, uh, the Etin instead. I'm expecting that what happened there was that they blocked all the damage. I would hope that something like Wraith Verge was Im not immune to the shield, but like pierced the shield. Have, have, yeah, basically immune to the shield. No, 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 I just took more damage than I expected, than I gained <laughs> doing that because that bloody bugger. It should be fairly easy as long as we don't hit ourselves! Ah. Just keep him uh, in shield mode. Please. Though. Don't even know what these ones are called anymore. Like the centaurs that shoot. They do have a name. Obviously, everything has a name. Answers in the uh, comments. No doubt our 42% health friend will know. They seem to know everything, which is gratifying because I don't seem to know anything. Uh, so they're helpfully filling in all the gaps in my knowledge, which are many and varied. That's going to open at some point, I know. I don't know at what point that is. Is it this point? No. I think... Oh, heck. This is another great section. So, you ready? Go down here. We activate everything. We stay here. Everything gets switched. Squished. Pull the thing. We have to go from there to there without getting squished. Luckily, these are Etins and do not reflect our shots back at us. This is such a great idea. I'm pretty sure you could have done this in Doom as well. Die! Die, flying mouse. I wish this thing would step onto there so that when I pull this down it comes to get me. The difficulty is not running <laughs> too far. Ha! Oh! That one squished itself, which saves me some mana. Which we are now only on half of, so... Probably good. This is a switch that we need to press, so one of these does something else. That one. And then we do this, and then there's a load of bishops, and then we just keep doing this until the bishops get squished. Okay? Uh, and no, that is not what we kids are calling it these days. I literally mean... Dead bishops. Gordon Bennett. Those shots are very difficult to dodge. Please, though. Just die. Are you sure I do? It's a shame. We could probably make up the mana at some point. 
Can I reach that? I also like that there's a much narrower range of being able to make switches in Hexen than there is in Doom. I'm not sure about Heretic. Heretic is very much the Doom engine reskinned, but I'm not quite sure if they change the uh, the switch pulling range. Oh, that's helpful. That's very helpful, in fact. Basically, gave us enough mana to get through the rest of this right now. Okay. It's very noisy. Little do you know, but I reduced the volume of these episodes by about 12 decibels. Uh, when I post-process. Just because they're so damn loud. Uh, we want to go that way. Very cool idea. For uh, an area. Right, if these have gone down now, so this is a bit where it doesn't look like you would be able to reach, but you totally can, so. That's a little. Stop shooting at me. And the fact that you can't one or two shot an Afrit, although we might have two shot it. The fact that an Afrit takes so many shots to kill really is testament to the weakness of this weapon. Even though it looks good, you definitely need a crowd. Like you can see we hit a different one there, so... Definitely has an amount of splash damage, but that's really not selling it for me. Good. Jump very high. Considering this is about head height, it's... Yeah. Basically, literally reaches our head. A couple of those. Ah, uh, Missed. Try again. We've seen the ones that shoot us before. We can cope with it. Luckily, running backwards there is not a terrible idea, but it kind of hurt. Kind of scares me. Come on. Come on. I know you're in there. Oop. You need these? No. don't really know what to do with those. I mean, I understand that they have a function, but I don't really... I don't want to say I don't know what the function is. I just don't know how to make it work for me. I think we can jump from there to there. Let's try it. Remember to shout parkour, or it won't work. Ah, parkour! It did work. Yeah, I knew you were there. Oh, I didn't know it was there. That's disingenuous to suggest that I knew that would be, excuse me. Uh, what? Probably a bug in this version of the uh, engine. Okay, unless. There's like a monster closet thing? Maybe. When did you go there? Three mana, yes. Oh god! <laughs> well, we know what to do. Look how awesome that looks. Especially in this new version of the engine. Where they have like black outlines. The negative lighting on them. Really cool. Very much a fan of that. More blue mana, please. Where did that bishop go, though? I keep wanting to check the map, because there used to be a cheat that would show... as Basically, a debug cheat, but it would show the positions of these things. So these don't show up on them. They do. What? Excuse me? Ah! What the heck? I didn't know you could do that in Hexen. Did I? That's where the fucking thing went. That is very, very cool. I had no idea you could do that in Hexen. So that's a thing. <laughs> oh, I'm super pleased by that. That's basically what I would use in a game like in Unreal, in Unreal Tournament, uh, a similar trick to that to make these non-Euclidean levels, right? You have a, a teleport thing such that, well, uh, in Unreal Tournament they tended to be a little bit more clear, uh, their use of that teleport trick, but you could use it without, um, with, like, seamlessly. You could use it seamlessly. And all you do is you make two corridors that look the same and have one teleport you into the other. Yeah, you're trapped in there now, so screw you. 
But I think there's only two more to put down, so we have found them. Having found all several, <laughs> five, so I believe has opened up something over here. I'm very scared to go down there because if I do that, I'll get attacked. If I get attacked, I'll be sad. And if I'm sad, that spawned, which I want, but it will cause things to happen. You can see the, uh, they certainly wait to show you their effects. Oh, help. <laughs> Maybe another Wraith first job. The fact that it one-shots basically every room makes me very less reluctant to use it than I am to use any other weapon that I've got, really. Probably want to use um, green mana for now. We have this Crater of Might, which is certainly going to help. Don't confuse that, by the way, with the Crater of Filth. Very different thing. I can understand how you would like come to that. Confusion, don't worry about it. It happens all the time. Similar named things have no similar associations, but no, no, no. Quite different. What do these even do? Boots of Speed. They probably make you faster. I have two of them now, which is probably going to help in future. No, oh, that's not a baddie. I thought it was, though. Look at all this carnage that Wraith Virgins have produced. So that was cool. There's another... Uh, there's nine, nine puzzles now. So we've had three, six, and nine, which is great. But I really appreciate the fact that rather than just give us another level with you know, nine switches to find, they made us do a puzzle to find the nine switches in the first place. Like the, the nine switch puzzle. Can you even shoot through there? Can I even shoot through there? You can, so I should be able to. I'm not down with this. I also like that in uh, this hub, every level just has links to every other level. Yeah, I can get through that. Just have to make sure I actually uh, hit the thing. Wow, well done. Let's um, drink your blood while you can't get me. That's a, I think that's a touch attack, so as long as you're in range of it, you can do it. Which really helps, because often they're sort of stuck behind a pillar just like that. Gives you a great opportunity to try and drink their blood before. They can actually reach you in the first place. Well, you can reach me apparently. And I can't reach you. That makes me sad. Drink your blood then. The fools that came too close. Mana. Afrit. Afrit. Okay. <laughs> Afrit! Oh god. I'm running quite low on mana because I'm very aggressively using these weapons, which. Ugh. Especially since I keep missing. Doesn't fill me with confidence. Although, at least it is now worthwhile picking up this extra piece of mana here. So I will. Ah, uh, or shall. I will and shall. Does anybody else like using words correctly in an archaic fashion such that people get confused in a modern vernacular? I do. Will is one of those words. I mean, we still use the word would. In a semi-archaic way. I mean, people know enough about that use of the word would, as in, it is my wish. You know? I would that this were the case. That's, not... that's uh, definitely worth doing. In fact, it's a lot easier to hit them by draining them than it is to hit them in any other way. I'm using a lot of mana, but it seems to drain, like, piecemeal. There's something to be said about Hexen because you have to, I think, like, that's obviously a thing, right? You have to have noticed. You have to be aware of the video game tropes because what are uh, secrets in other games might just simply be what you have to find in Hexen. There's one of our ninths already. I'm going to use my... What's opened? These have opened. Another torch. Not really feeling that the torches are that useful. Mostly because I've got, like, modern graphics, I suppose. Which are really reducing the dependency that I have on being able to see, because I can see. Right, that's open this one. And probably something else, unless there's a third one. 
Uh, nah. Two switches. One switch there. No. There's an arrow on the floor. I like that. It's possible that we don't go here yet. Alright, let's try a different one. The wolf one. What's it called? Wolf Chapel. That makes sense. Explains the wolf, I guess. Might be another situation where I use Wraith Verge to try and get this done with, because having to deal with this many Minotaurs or whatever. Not Minotaurs. Right. The, the worst centaurs ever. Come on. Kill that one. With, you know, cleric weapons, which is pretty difficult at the best of times. Oh god, they're still not all dead. Is. That's a challenge. I think that one just shot that one, which was nice. I assume they're immune to one another's shots, even if it doesn't seem like they are. Why? First of all. <laughs> First of all. Why is that centaur still here? Because it clearly walked through the portal. Get out of my way. That works, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, somehow, one would have expected it not to have done. It's a slaughter. There you go. Just die to it and you'll find out. No worries. So let's fire this over here like this. Although, we probably had a comment to that effect, so I should know by now, but I haven't uploaded the other video yet, so I don't know what you all said, but thanks for commenting, appreciate it. Oh, I walked into that, you saw me catch that shot, like literally catching a bullet, literally figuratively catching a bullet, well, that was fairly literal. Ow though, like one of the main reasons I don't want to use any of my other items is that I'm so dependent on my quartz flasks. To get me out of scrapes and binds. I'm so low on mine. <laughs> There's at least only one mana per shot, so this is a reasonably efficient weapon, compared to the other one anyway, especially against these slaughters and centaurs. I don't think we can afford to fire Wraith Verge right now. Like, I don't think we have enough mana. This is fine. We could pick some up. I don't want to use it. There's plenty of blue mana around anyway. Avoid that. Good job. Got enough HP now that if we just don't be silly, stop taking bad damage. Yeah, like that. That thing moves a lot faster than I expect, actually. That projectile. We should be able to get through this. It only cost me four. I think. Like, you can get different amounts of ouch from these things. That seems to be the case right now. So I'd like to maybe drain this Etim through the wall. Which is apparently going to work because you can jump in this game. And that's not even a hack in the modern version of the engine. That is simply part of the game. I think you can jump as high as you could. That may have been the wrong time to pick up mana. What do you want to do about these? Maybe we can try and at least get some damage done like this. And use a bit of a blue mana to finish the job. Ow, actually. I think that's both of them. Yeah, I seem to have one shot one of those. So maybe there's um like a damage roll that you get when you use some of these weapons. Some of these weapons. Like there's a large array of weapons right here. I don't think there's a fixed damage on your weapons, is what I'm saying, so... Sometimes you can roll a low hit. It's slightly a shame that they didn't make more use of the moving... Um, the moving doors and things, because having more doors that just swing open... Would be super. It would be, like, that little bit more... Um, but like, it'd be more in keeping, more thematic. You know, these vertical doors that, by the way, you can't, like, that's the top of the building, so where did the door go, right? <clears throat> Having a swing and open doors would be way more thematic, and they have used them in a very thematic way. And I expect that they are expensive, 
to have, like, computationally expensive to have too many, at least compared to what computer power was in those days. Um... But, I mean, it's, it's a perspective of, of modern game development, I suppose, where you, know, you make all the doors the same if you can. But you usually can. I don't know if that was always the case. These uh, rising doors are part of the original Doom engine and were basically the only type of door... They were literally the only type of door that you had. Fast ones and slow ones in the original Doom, so... Keep hearing things next to me, it's the... The landing of the other shots that's scaring the crap out of me. Well, we seem to reasonably cleared this out, and we're about to embark on what well, looks like a dangerous mission, so I think I'll cut this episode here. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you. Thank you. In the next one. Good day.